title of this board is Planning for 2015 and it's supposed about setting up the farm uh, for uh, post coater removal. It's just I suppose to look at what are the things that are important um, in the whole as we walk around the, the open day here today. The first thing here is milk coaters are gone in 2015 and we're in the expansion phase between now and 2015. Second thing is volatility is becoming a much bigger feature of our production system. We've seen that since 2007. There will be a requirement to build additional processing capacity. Uh, and I suppose the other two things is that grass, increased grass utilisation and increased numbers of high EBI heifers are going to drive or fuel the expansion at farm level. The constraints that we have to look at are, I suppose, the things we have to farm within are in terms of our environmental policy, in terms of climate change, and a much less uh, availability of credit uh, in the overall um, wider economy. I suppose just to look at um, just to look at in terms of volatility, up to 2000, if we look at price change per year between 2000 and 2007, uh, it's quite minimal. But if we look at the graph, we can see that after 2007, there's huge changes in, in both input and output prices. The output prices in terms of milk are largely driven by a reduction in support for, for uh, market support in terms of cap, in line of uh, intervention and export refunds. Um, and in terms of input prices, it's probably driven a lot more by uh, volatility in energy uh, costs around the world and oil prices. So we can see here that our production systems are much more exposed to volatility and have been over the last couple of years. So risk is much more pronounced and we need to have risk reduction strategies and most of what we see here today in terms of generating high EBI heifers, increasing grass utilisation are essentially about, um, are about re reducing risk at farm level and increasing profitability. The final one in terms of risk is milk quota. Um, at the end of 2009-2010 year, we finished our milk quota at 10% under quota. Since then, uh, between 2010 and 2011, we increased milk output by 10.5%, finishing 2011 just 0.45% under quota. So essentially, we have significant uh, increase in output. There's more heifers entering the dairy herd, so there is potential uh, for su further levy super levies, and we need to develop a milk quota management plan. Just in terms of seasonality, there are uh, costs associated with seasonality and I suppose what we do is we look at um, what we've done here is compared spring calving, so 100% spring calving versus a scenario where we calf 50% of the herd in, in the autumn and 50% in the spring. We're trying to quantify what the net effect is for the overall industry or what strategy the overall industry should take. So at farm level, by um, moving to a 50-50 spring autumn, we reduced our profitability by 2.3 centilitre. Um, and at processing level, we gained one cent per litre, or we could pay an extra one cent per litre. That's an overall net reduction of 1.3 cent per litre by moving from a spring calving system to a 50-50 spring autumn. In terms of the natural situation, if we scale that up to with 5.2 billion litres, we're talking about a loss of farm level by going from a spring to 50-50 autumn spring of 114 million, and again a processing level of somewhere in the tune of 49 million. Basically, what that is is a net loss of 65 million. That's clearly showing us that. Um, there is a net advantage associated with uh, seasonality and that we will have to build additional processing capacity. But the work that has been done so far is showing that, that processing capacity is not going to be a significant cost, somewhere in the tune of somewhere around 10 to 14 cent per litre. Finally, just in terms of milk quota, um, you know, I suppose what we're saying here is that everyone needs to develop a milk quota management plan if they are going to be breaching their super levy situation. Because we've increased heifer numbers, we're going to have an extra 34,000 heifers in 2011 and about another 40 on top of that in 2012. But we have to keep in mind that milk quotas are going to be removed in 2015. So essentially what that's saying to us is that um, as milk quotas are removed, um, you know, the heifers that are put in calf or the breeding season for 2012 is for a no quota scenario. So uh, breeding animals, um, the next year's breeding season, the animals that are put in bred in 2000, 2011 will calf in 2014. The ones in calf in 2000, uh, that are bred in 2012 will calf after quotas are no longer a constraint. So what, really what we're saying is there's a number of issues, that number of topics that can be taken at farm level, such as reducing concentrate feeding, um, uh, once a day of milking, feeding extra milk to calves or reducing uh, lactation length. All of these will have an effect on supply and all of will have an effect on profit. Essentially what this work has shown is that um, first thing that should be done on farm level is reduce the amount of supplementary feed fed. Secondly, uh, look at the options of going once a day and finally feeding milk to calves or shortening lactation. Finally, just the board, what we're saying is that everyone needs to develop a plan, both short term and long term. Short term plan will cover issues such as quota management. Long term will be about strategies to increase grass utilisation, increase the number of heifers we have, and I suppose having better infrastructure on our farm for a post-quota scenario.